Today we're going to talk about a new programming concept called the for loop. Have you ever been in a situation in P5.js where you want to draw a shape over and over again in repetition and finding yourself in a situation like this one? Essentially, drawing a row of ellipse require you to copy and paste the same shape over and over and over again and offset its X position, you know, a little bit at a time manually. So using a for loop can actually help you automate this process in a much shorter and precise way. To write a for loop, you have to start with typing out the English word for, followed by a parenthesis. What goes inside of that parenthesis is the most crucial part of a for loop structure. Um, essentially, you need to add three different elements inside of that parenthesis. The first element is initiating a variable that is going to only work inside of this for loop. So here I got let x equals to zero and notice the semicolon after that because that let that first element let x equals to zero it's its own command. And the second element is a condition similar to what we've been doing in the conditional statement. And here um, I am just creating a condition so that x needs to be smaller than 3. So, so the first two elements um, combined together actually lets the for loop execute the, the, the block of code inside of the curly bracket. So, so what's happening here, it's the for loop gets run, let x is equal to zero, therefore x is smaller than three, and therefore um, console.log x gets executed. Once that's done, um, the, the for loop, it's kind of like threading a needle. It is circled back up um, to the third element here and add one to x or we have set it to add one to x you can also add two you can also minus one you can increment or you can decrement so um, let's actually return to our editor here and just test it out real quick so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, comment out all the ellipses here so i have a clean sketch and usually, most of the time, you're going to put your for loop inside of draw, but I'm going to put it inside of setup to, to kind of make it clear what it's doing. So um, you type for and let x equals to zero, semicolon, very important here, x smaller than three, semicolon, x equals x plus one. So, so if I do that, and if I type console.log here and add x, what I'm going to see is, is a sequence of three numbers inside of my console. So we all know that the setup function only gets ex executed once, right? Um, so if I put console.log here, for loop is starting, and console.log at the end for loop has ended. Even though setup only get run once, when I hit, oh, missing a closing quotation mark there, when I hit play, this is what I'm getting inside of that console, right? So, so even though I run once, it get to line six, it says, that, okay, for loop is starting, and it gets to line eight, recognizing that, oh, now we're encountering a for loop situation. It is going to loop inside of that for loop between line eight and line 12 until X becomes, you know, bigger than three <laughs> or equal to three. 
and and it's going to you know continue to execute and you know line 14 is going to appear only after the program exit the for loop there is a shorthand way of writing x equals to x plus one and that looks like x plus plus so if you hit play the same exact thing is going to happen it's just a shorthand way of writing x equals x plus one okay so now let's actually go in and take a deeper look at every single step that a for loop is taking for this to happen when the for loop begins it initiate a variable let x equals to zero and that variable is being tested against the condition x smaller than three whenever the condition gets tested to be true it's going to execute that block of code inside of the curly bracket and here we print zero and once that happens it loops back to the third element of that parenthesis and add one to x and once that's done the, 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 the program then circle back to the beginning of the for loop. And this time, you know, on step four, let x is now equal to one because we just added one to it. And once let x equals to one, it's still going to be tested true, right? With that second condition there. So x is going to get printed, which is one, and it's going to circle back again and do the same thing with two except um once 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 we we loop back the third time the x is going to be equal to three which is not smaller than three right and that's when the for loop ends all right so now let's bring this for loop inside of a draw function so I'm going to copy this and just delete the part up here and I'm gonna put this in draw. And when I hit play, um, we're going to see something that's slightly different. Essentially, 0, 1, 2 gets looped over and over and over and over again. And that's because the draw function itself is also a looping mechanism, right? So, so what's happening here is we enter the draw function line seven, it hits line 10 and wow, for loop, and it's going to loop zero, one, two, and continue the program. But however, since we're inside a draw function, it's gonna come back and execute this whole draw function um, module over and over and over again. Okay, so, now let's um, replace these console numbers uh, with some shapes. And what I'm going to try to reproduce is that row of circles we saw in the beginning. So I'm gonna start with ellipse and I'm gonna say the X position is gonna be 25 and um, the height is going to be, you know, height divided by two and width and height is going to be 50, 50. Okay. So we got one circle here, even though three circles have been drawn. And what is happening here is that we, we do indeed have three circles on the screen. It's just that they're all overlapping on top of each other and we can't see them. So what we're gonna do now is to offset the X position every time the circle gets drawn. And um, a common way to do that is using the, the for loop variable that we have created because essentially that variable works sort of like a counter, right? It increments every single time for loop gets executed. So here I am, you know, going to say 25 times I, that's one way to do it, right? Um, so I have something here that's wrong. Oh. Sorry, 25 times x. <laughs> so that's the variable here. 
And so um, now we see the circle laying out and maybe I can switch 25 to 50. So it's going to be offset based on um, the width of my circle, which I can also write W, which is our variable here, right? And another thing I could do is add 25 here to offset my whole drawing to the right. So my circle starts on the edge. Now, if I want to create more circles, there's actually a very easy way to do that. And essentially, I just have to change my condition, right? So, so now the circle is going to stop drawing when it hits number three. Um, I can make it so that it would stop once it hits number eight, right? So, so we the circle draw when x is 0 and x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and that's it, <laughs> right? And so, so this is a, a very uh, efficient way to, to draw multiple repetition of the same thing uh, by using a for loop. If I want to create more circles, and except I want them to display in a column, we have to do the same thing, but for the y axis. So, so here it might look like width divided by two, and I can actually just copy this and put it into my y, and we're gonna see a, a straight vertical version um, of my ellipse pattern here. Uh, one last thing I wanna share with you is that you can also you know, increment your x not just by one, but by other numbers, right? So I can say um, x equals x plus two, for instance. And in the shorthand way, it's going to be written as x plus equals two. I'm just gonna make a note here that this is equivalent to x equals x plus two. So, so if I hit play here, what we're going to see here is that the circle is only going to get drawn like at the position of every other circle, right? Because we have skipped um, like every other circle uh, before we draw one. So this is the basics of how you would use a for loop. Um, in the next tutorial, we are going to learn how we can use something called the nested for loop to create a grid.